Panorama has been in contact with dozens of women who are in extreme pain. They've been recording their stories. It's 25 to 5 in the morning. Once again, I'm not sleeping. I can't sit up right because it's like knitting needles digging into my groin. They're suffering after an operation they were told was the gold standard. It can feel like glass, actual like broken glass. Um, that's the way I'd describe it. Um, sore all the time, tired all the time, can't do anything. It really has ruined my life. I've counted them many times. Every one of the 49. Each of the 49 steps to get to Claire Daisley's flat is a struggle. Oh, doing great to our rest. Then I tell myself only a few. Three more. This is Claire seven years ago. Like many women, childbirth left her with a weakened bladder. So she had an operation to fix it. She was told it was a simple procedure. Aye. 20 minutes, 25 minutes. New woman, sort you out, gold standard procedure. That'll be you, can get back to your normal life. Just go straight through to the left. A small strip of plastic known as mesh was fitted to support a tube from her bladder but it damaged her nerves and caused constant pain. I was crying, getting in the car, out the car, coming up the stairs. Uh, the pain in my legs was just horrendous. There was no feeling in my pelvic region. It was numb. Can I give you a hand? Claire had her mesh taken out two years ago, but it has made the damage even worse. Up. Yep. I don't want to be here anymore. That's how far it's taken me. Um, because sometimes you don't know if you can take the next day to the day you've had. How can I go through another day? I've been reporting on the story of Claire and women like her for the past three and a half years. Their campaign led to the Scottish Government calling for a suspension of mesh products. Vaginal mesh implants are used to treat incontinence, or prolapse, which is when organs move out of place in the pelvis. When they were launched in the late 90s, they were seen as a great thing because they promised quicker, cheaper surgery. They're made of plastic, and now they're inside millions of women worldwide, including tens of thousands in the UK. Either way, that hook go into the patient's right side, and that hook goes into the patient's left side. These are the hooks used to fit mesh similar to the one Claire had. It looks kind of medieval. For the manufacturers, for the surgeons, we didn't see it that way. We thought this is the gold standard. Dr. Whale Agur used to fit mesh, but now he's got concerns. I believe that the risks outweigh the benefits of the vast majority of the mesh procedures and mesh devices. Looking back on this, we jumped on the bandwagon to do it um, and realised later that perhaps that wasn't a very good idea. Millions of women around the world have had mesh implants. For the vast majority, the treatment has been a success. But for a small minority, the complications have been devastating. The proportion of women affected is hotly contested. Previous surgical treatments had complications too, but the problems some women have suffered with mesh from a range of manufacturers are significantly more serious than patients and doctors had expected. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And if it weren't for my kids, 
I wouldn't be here. I can promise you that. The pain, it's 24 seven. I had to retire from my job at the age of 40 in 2013 um, because I was n not able to work. I um, was in too much pain. But many doctors think mesh is an important treatment option. So in total, how many operations would you have done? Linda Cardozo has fitted thousands of mesh implants for incontinence. She refers to them as tape. She's a world-leading urogynecologist. I always use the um, mother, sister, wife uh, test and say, would I have it myself? And the answer is absolutely no doubt about it. The vast majority are very, very happy with their tapes. Mesh for prolapse uses a bigger piece of plastic and has led to higher complication rates than mesh for incontinence. So its use is being reviewed. You might think that any device that's going to be put into your body for the rest of your life would be subject to rigorous testing and regulation, and that any side effects would have been picked up in clinical trials and reported prior to its use. But when mesh came on the market, that wasn't the case. Whilst medicines require clinical trials before use, mesh is a device, so the rules were different. Mesh for hernia was already in use, so with vaginal mesh, manufacturers could argue their products were similar. It's a process called equivalence. Which basically is a loophole in regulation globally that says, my device is similar to your device, could I have access to the market? And it means there was no clinical trial evidence of particularly saying this is safe devices that we can use long term. You're saying you can put a permanent device into someone's body without any clinical trials? Yeah, and this is the, the loophole, if you like, in the whole system that leads to dire consequences. Effectively, we have to trust manufacturers to tell us whether their own products work. Would that be normal, though, to, to, to start a procedure and a, a sort of, you know, it's a permanent implantable device before the clinical data. It, it's true of many things that we implant. It's true of artificial hips. They were implanted before there were good data. It's true of heart valves. They, they went in before there were mature data. So, unfortunately, you have to start somewhere. Launching products quickly allows patients to access new treatments faster. Did that mean mesh was used in patients before the risks were fully understood? To find out, I've travelled to America, where most mesh comes from. Take the exit on the right. Over here is the headquarters of one of the biggest mesh manufacturers in the world. Ethicon is part of the multi-billion dollar company, Johnson & Johnson. Their mesh products are commonly used in the UK. One of Ethicon's corporate videos promoted the benefits of their mesh products. But now some 60,000 other women in the US are suing Johnson & Johnson after problems with their mesh implants. Adam Slater is the lawyer representing 240 of them. What Johnson & Johnson did is terrible. They put money in front of the health and safety of women. I took the deposition of the worldwide medical affairs director of Johnson & Johnson and Ethicon in charge of these products, and he testified under oath they knew all the risks from day one. So all of the different adverse events I've asked you about with regard to the TVT devices, these were known from the very beginning when the TVT began to be marketed, correct? I agree. They knew that the risk profile was horrific. Ethicon said using only one part of his testimony is selective, and that all surgical pelvic floor procedures with and without mesh come with the risk of developing these complications. They said they care deeply about patients who use their products.
Panorama has obtained hundreds of documents from US legal cases. Among them, emails that appear to show how doctors lobbied on behalf of Ethicon to ensure patients kept getting mesh implants. Our story starts with this man, Dr. Don Ostergaard. Right. He's a vocal critic of mesh. And a decade ago, he argued doctors should treat mesh surgery as experimental. Since there was no information as to what the long-term effects of the mesh was, patients were not able to be informed of what would happen once that mesh is put into place. That became a big problem for Ethicon when a major doctor's association called ACOG agreed with Dr. Ostergaard. They issued advice to their 55,000 members that mesh for prolapse should be treated as experimental. Why would it have mattered to the manufacturers or to anyone else if mesh was described as experimental? Uh, if you're going to tell a patient we're going to put some mesh in you and the mesh itself and the procedure is experimental, patients aren't going to like that. But six months later, ACOG changed its advice. This helped promote the widespread use of mesh. The word experimental was dropped and emails from inside Ethicon help explain why. They reveal that behind the scenes, Ethicon was liaising with doctors about lobbying ACOG. Among them, Dr. Vincent Lucente. Ethicon paid him $1.7 million over 10 years to consult and teach other doctors how to implant mesh. But the emails show he did more. Vincent Lucenti went behind the scenes and he manipulated ACOG and he got them to remove the word experimental. Dr. Lucente bragged to Ethicon, saying this is one I am taking the credit for. And this is a major victory. One senior Ethicon employee was overjoyed. The worldwide marketing director at Ethicon says, and this is all capital letters, I am doing the happy dance. I love you, man. And a big happy face. It's all about money. That is a marketing director who knows that the money train is going to keep going. Dr. Lucente told us he made a single phone call to ACOG because experimental wasn't accurate. He said the scope of his work for Ethicon never included any lobbying of professional bodies. Ethicon said it's customary to engage with physicians and researchers. And ACOG said Dr. Lucente played no part in the changing of the word. They said it changed because it was ambiguous and mesh was already being used. I'm on my way to Philadelphia to meet a woman who sued Johnson & Johnson because of the damage caused by her mesh implants. So is this the first time you've been back? Yeah, this is, the first, this is the first time I've been back to, um, to Philadelphia since September 7th uh, when I won my verdict. First time. Ella Ebor yeah, won I win $57 million. Dollars. I, I met her with her family at her lawyer's office. Yeah, it was a Make-A-Wish event and uh, these guys were... Playing. This is my softball days when I played on a major women's softball team. They were called the Lakerettes and we were six-time national champions. Ten years ago, Ella had two meshes implanted to treat a weak bladder. One of them was Ethicon's latest model, the TVT Secure. It feels like I'm on fire. I have infections all the time. Um, my groin is numb just sitting here. Um, it feels like the best way for me to describe it is like pins and needles, like when your hand goes to sleep. That's how I feel when I'm sitting. Um, so in bed, 
is where I spend most of most of my time. This is you and Jamie. You wanna know this was a beautiful day. I was sad because I couldn't help my daughter out with her wedding and her getting things ready because the pain is just too bad. Ella went through several surgeries to try to remove the mesh from her body. The pain that I have, I will have to live with for the rest of my life. There's nothing they can do they to help They said they me. can't reverse it. There's nothing that they can do to, to fix it. I always said I, I love her no matter what, but it sort of robbed us of, of, of what we expected but she stole all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> it's tough. The man that I love, I can't be intimate with him. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm 51 years old. We should be enjoying our life together. Kyla Baldwin is Ella Ebor's lawyer. At the heart of their case were emails from Inside Ethicon about the TBT Secure. The first time I went through these emails, um, my jaw almost hit the floor, and I thought, my God, this is frightening. This is really frightening that a company can conduct itself this way. These emails show that Ethicon had done very little testing on Ella's type of mesh before okay. they launched it. So, mm, tell me In again fact, about, they'd about only tested it on 31 women women. and on sheep. So they had long-term data in sheep, and then five weeks of data in 31 women, which was not good. And then they decided, let's go ahead and launch, launch it anyway. That's certainly not a long-use study, and that's certainly not a clinical trial. They are guinea pigs. They're experimental test subjects. This has not been tested in a long-term study for safety. Ethicon said it consistently evaluated its products in clinical settings before and after launch and worked with surgeons to develop them. They empathized with women who experienced complications, but said the vast majority see an improvement. Women like Ella are experiencing permanent side effects. On a daily basis, these are the medicines I now have to take. These are all my painkillers. This is one to help protect my stomach from the painkillers. And these are the two that I used to take. And I think one of the things that is, uh, is missing at the minute is the understanding of the severity of these complications. Um, I'm mostly high spined. My life feels like it's over. I struggle every day to just try to have some kind of a life. Panorama has seen evidence that inside Ethicon, a doctor had concerns almost a decade ago about what the company was telling surgeons. There's an email here from 2008 that shows the company's own associate medical director. She writes to bosses saying they should amend the instructions for use. They're known as the IFUs. It's what doctors use to explain to patients what some of the risks or complications of an operation might be. Whilst the instructions referred to painful side effects, they suggested they were transitory or not permanent. But in 2009, she says, from what I see, they're not transitory at all. They were not updated at the time, and that matters. I would expect all the comprehensive information about the adverse events to be present in the manufacturer's instructions for use, because this is what I would rely on in identifying all the available risks so I can explain these to my patients. Ethicon said the IFUs were evaluated by a specialist and the wording was appropriate for the intended users, trained surgeons. They said risks were also identified in professional educational materials. It can take years for the worst effects of mesh to appear. This problem has started to come into light in the last few years. We did not realize the extent of this problem five, six years ago. 
Years after it's fitted, mesh can cut into nearby organs. So this must be the um, tenth, ninth, tenth trip to the toilet um, tonight between 12 and 6. Um, and this is what mesh has done to me, so I've hardly had any sleep. Helen Flinders had two mesh implants fitted for incontinence in 2011. They weren't made by Ethicon, but by a different mesh manufacturer. I was told that this is, you know, gold A-star surgery. For a couple of years, I was okay, I was fine. And this is what happens, that often women have it fitted and they're fine for the first few years. Three years after her operation, her symptoms got worse. The mesh cut into the tube from her bladder. It's called an erosion. I do get like a burning pain where the tapes sit. I can fit exactly where the tapes are sitting. A really hot, fiery feeling inside. Now she's about to have an operation to try to remove her mesh. So I've had um, four operations in the last two and a half years to um, fix the erosions and um, to try and relieve the discomfort that I'm uh, experiencing. Julie Satari had a mesh fitted for incontinence 10 years ago. I was very happy, everything was very uh, comfortable. Like I think I was back at work within two weeks. I thought it was a success. She then suffered a prolapse and had a second mesh put in. At this point, she became more unwell. I'm sometimes I'm in pain, uh, particularly at night, it can be quite aggressive. She visited 11 consultants to try to fix the problem. Frustrated is how I feel most of the time. Frustrated, it makes me angry. I get quite um, emotional sometimes. She's been chatting with Helen on the phone for months. Now they're both at a private hospital where they're having their mesh removed. <laughs> wow. How real does this feel now? Really real. How are you feeling? I'm a little bit nervous about it, but I know I'm in good hands. Figures compiled for Panorama show that since 2006, there have been more than 6,000 procedures for mesh removal or partial removal on the NHS. Because mesh is designed to work its way into surrounding tissue, it's hard to remove it completely. Sohair El Neil and her team have done hundreds of surgical removals. All right, thank you. Good? Yeah, I'm good. So, uh, we're going to go ahead with surgery today. Yep. Briefly again, so risk of bleeding, infection, trauma to the bladder, the urethra and the surrounding tissues and the vessels. Okay. okay. Any yeah. other questions? No, I'm ready. <laughs> what was happening is that increasingly people saw this as a quick fix um, and so therefore many people were advised to go ahead and have some form of insertion of mesh. It was felt patients are going to get the best deal, um, hospitals are going to get a good deal, the NHS was going to get it, everybody was getting a good deal. But actually at the end of the day, those in whom it worked great, but those in whom it didn't, did not get a great deal. It's now clear that some women weren't told the full extent of the risks. The rules for devices like mesh are set to change in a few years. But in the meantime, more than a thousand women from England and Scotland are now involved in legal action. About half of them are suing the NHS. I say that it is a disaster. Everybody who's had a device now needs to be in a registry, we need to follow them up annually, and we need to say what's the true rates of benefits and harms. 
Many doctors say mesh still has real benefits for the majority of women. You cannot operate without complications occurring in a small minority of cases. You are never aware of complications that may occur many years later. And that doesn't just occur with these tapes and meshes. So where does that leave all the women who have mesh inside them? There is no need to be anxious. The vast majority of women will not have problems with these vaginal implants, but be vigilant because they're the problems could develop years later. Helen's mesh was removed. It's early days, but she's feeling hopeful. So I'm 16 days post-op, and I feel great, to be honest. Um, I can go four or five hours without needing to urinate, so I'm not looking for a toilet everywhere I go now. But for other women, the damage caused by a small piece of plastic cannot be undone. You have 20, 25 minutes to destroy your life. That's all it took. And I'm never going to get it back.